Hey guys, Todd Derry here, TD's Fat to Fit. I'm doing a video series on metabolic dysfunction or metabolic disease. And I'm going to go into a few different topics, but the video is like over an hour long, so I have to chop it up. Uh, so the first chapter is going to have my background, some issues I've dealt with and how I cured uh, Crohn's disease, autoimmune disease. And then I'm going to go into what a healthy metabolism is, uh, proteins, good fats, bad fats, carbohydrates, and BMR. And then the next chapter and chapter two and chapter three will have other topics. But this is chapter one. Let's get into it. Today, we're going to talk about the metabolism, how it works, why we develop obesity over the period of a lifetime and how we get fat and gain 50 to 100 pounds throughout our adult life. Why is our metabolism broken? But also, most importantly, how to fix it. Key thing, how to fix it without starving yourself. You can eat as much as you want. If you're eating the right foods, you can eat as much as you want. I can hear the gurus now. This isn't up for debate. It's a science, bro. It's all about law of thermodynamics, bro. Calories in, calories out. Those that are fat are just lazy and eat too much. <laughs> I'm here to say that that is bullshit. If you find this subject interesting... Please like, please subscribe, comment below, tell me I'm bullshit or, or challenge me in any way. We can have a conversation. But this content is long. It's in depth. If I just released one video, it'd be almost two hours long. So I'm going to break it up into a few sections and release it over a week or so. I do want to talk about the importance of a whole food diet. When you correct your diet and actually fix your metabolism and, and, and improve your mitochondrial health, it changes so many di different things within your body. It helps you in a longevity perspective, in a health perspective, but also in a disease prevention perspective. And in my case, I cured Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease, an incurable autoimmune disorder, is gone. I do not have it anymore. I'm going to get into that in a second, but I want you to take away the importance and the, and the power of a whole foods, real food diet. So what is my background? I've been a bodybuilder for about 35 years. I've won multiple titles from the age of 17. I've been a trainer and a coach for multiple athletes from pro and amateur bodybuilders to physique athletes to strength competitors from 15 years old to 75 years young. Men and women alike, I've helped a lot of people achieve their fitness goals. I've been an IFBB Physique America judge, chairman of New England, and a promoter. So I've seen both the business side of the fitness industry, and the competitive side. I've had my own personal journey, losing over 120 pounds and doing this more than once. Well, not losing 100 pounds more than once, but losing a lot of weight several times in my life. But finding the truth in the end on how to actually stay in shape year-round and getting the body of your dreams and keeping it. That's what this channel is. This channel is about truth. What has worked for me and my clients in my 35-year pursuit of knowledge in this seemingly infinitely confusing subject of fitness and give you the cliff notes on what works and what doesn't. What's the bullshit out there and what's reality? When I was 25, something I haven't mentioned before, uh, I had an ulcer and that progressed to Crohn's disease. Um, I was plainly shitting blood in a toilet, red blood, not to get too much graphic, but that was the case. I was in serious pain. I had an upper GI, lower GI, scopes, and finally had an ultrasound and then a uh, colonoscopy. Colonoscopy, if you haven't had one, you should try it out. It's good times. It's a polite way of saying sticking a scope up your ass. <laughs> and in my case, they didn't use anesthesia. And the gastroenterologist is asking me to fart to allow the to extract the scope from my ass. And as I'm laying basically bare ass on this table, I'm laughing because he's asking me to fart because he's pushing so much air and gas into my, into my intestine that it helps remove the scope. And as I lean up, I see about 10 to 15 nurses standing at the door watching the circus act. It was a great time. It's like a spectator sport. So if you haven't had one, you probably will soon if you're middle-aged and, uh, Check it out. It's a lot of fun. So in the end, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And he, the gastroenterologist said I had about 200 bleeding ulcers in the last 10 inches of my ileum. And this is why I was literally just 
bleeding out my ass. I think I remember at one point taking over a hundred pills in one day, continuously for years. None of them did jack shit. Also TMI, I remember taking so many pills that I remember seeing those pills in the toilet floating after I'd eaten them. That's how many pills I was taking. And I'm going in to be get surgery or <clears throat> getting scheduled for my first surgery. I thought, you know what? I'm not going, this is not, this is not working for me. I don't want to get cut open. I don't want to have my intestine removed. I'm going to look at other adjunct therapies. And this is not the thing to do. Tell a surgeon, no, you can't cut me open. It's not the best idea, but I did. And I looked into a couple other avenues and I developed a new diet. I read a few books and lo and behold, 18 months later, I was cured after another colonoscopy, sigmoidoscopy, other scopes, other ultrasounds. In 45 years of practice, this gastroenterologist that I had declared me as the first patient he has ever declared as cured of Crohn's, the incurable Crohn's disease. I was cured. To this day, I'm cured. I don't have it anymore because of diet. So that's what I want you to take away is... Diet is incredibly powerful, way more powerful than they ever want you to know because it is really information that you're taking in to help your body decipher and rebuild. And it's not about pills. It's not about anything other than what we put in our body. Today's agenda, we're going to talk about a healthy metabolism, what that looks like. What is it? We're going to talk about proteins, good and bad fats, carbohydrates, BMR. What is BMR? Basal metabolic rate. Calories in, calories out, the law of thermodynamics as it applies to uh, our metabolism. The hormone model or obesity model and the hypothesis. De, uh, de novo lipogenesis, what is that? Hormones associated with obesity. The liver specifically, how, do the, how the liver functions within our metabolism. Metabolic disease, indications for metabolic disease and insulin resistance. Type 2 diabetes and something called insulin lipohypertrophy. Type 1 diabetes and what happens to a type 1 diabetic. Issues with calories in, calories out. What works or what, what strategy should you apply to fix your metabolism and lose fat and get healthy? The truth about fat. Basically, a deep dive on fat metabolism specifically. How do the body reacts to eating saturated fat and what it actually does? Also, what does bodybuilding tell us in its infinite pursuit of a perfect body, big, strong muscles and no fat? What does bodybuilding tell us? What do they do and how do they implement certain strategies to achieve that perfect body? And then conclusion, my 35 years of my pursuit of education and knowledge about all things nutrition and how I believe what I believe in, what has, what has worked for me and my body. Healthy metabolism. <laughs> typically found in young, active, growing, energetic kids, adults. The body knows what it's consuming and what to do with those nutrients, such as proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. The food we consume is utilized for cell repair and rebuilding through many different mechanisms and means, primarily hormones and enzymes. It's a homeostatic system, which is in balance, Sleep, nutrition, metabolism, stress are all synergistically working together. The balance system is creating a strong, lean, healthy, happy, vibrant, energetic human with incredible potential, a balance that is rarely seen in 2024. It's now reported that 60% of adults have insulin resistance or the first signs of metabolic disease. The standard American diet is terrible. And it's now affecting our kids and giving our kids type 2 diabetes and adolescent obesity. Something we've never seen in human history is adolescent obesity, type 2 diabetes. This has just never, never happened before. All because of our standard American diet, the SAD diet. First is protein. Protein is made up of amino acids. And amino acids are the building blocks of most of the tissue within the body. Bones, muscles, ligaments, tendons, you name it. It's made of protein. So protein is metabolized and turns into nitrogen, and that's how it circulates through the body. This is when the body utilizes the nitrogen for cellular repair, enzyme production, hormone production. Nitrogen is then excreted through the blood, so you can't overconsume it. So we don't store 
protein. And that's why you need to eat, consume protein throughout the day. You always need to consume protein. And specifically, you need to consume more protein as you age. Something else we'll get into in the later part of the video. So nitrogen, again, is not stored in any way, shape, or form. So you have to constantly consume protein. And that should be your baseline of every meal. Should have a base of protein and then vegetables or whatever else you're going to have. But the primary source of nutrients should be protein. Protein also signals to the body to get rid of bad cells or damaged cells. And that's called cell apoptosis or cell autophagy. Both of these processes cleanse the body of bad dysfunctional cells. So we have room to make new ones or so produce new ones to replace the bad ones. And again, you need to eat more protein as you age because your body's ability to absorb nitrogen and circulate it through the body becomes less as you age. So you need to eat more protein. You can, like I said, I've always said, most of my clients, I always tell them, you can't eat enough protein. Eat as much protein as you can. Every meal should be the base of protein and that should increase as you age. Next, we're going to talk about fats. Good fats. Good fat sources come from grass-fed butter, grass-fed beef, pasture-raised eggs, high in omega-3s, salmon, avocados, avocado oil, coconut oil, um, cheese, small fish like sardines, cod, nuts of any type, olive oil. Don't cook with olive oil because it goes rancid above 300 degrees. So if you're going to cook with an oil, cook with avocado oil or even better macadamia nut oil. Macadamia nut oil is awesome. Also, macadamia nuts are very good too. So what are good fats made of? Good fats are omega-6s and omega-3s. These are essential fatty acids called lipoic acid or LA or ALA, alpha lipoic acid. Omega-6s are LA, omega-3s are ALA. Just a point of reference, the, the language and terminology is not really that important. These are the building blocks of cholesterol, and that's why it's an essential nutrient. We create cholesterol within our body, but we need to eat saturated fat in order to create cholesterol. Cholesterol is the precursor to all sex hormones. So cholesterol, after an enzyme reaction, turns into uh, testosterone, which turns into estrogen, which turns into aldos aldosterone and cortisol and all of the cascade of other sex hormones. This is why it's essential to eat saturated fat or you die. Same thing as protein. You need to eat protein or you will die. Other things good fats do is they help you absorb key vitamins like vitamin A, the production of vitamin D, vitamin E, K, all of which can't be done without fats. They're also the building blocks of enzymes, cell structure. Fats metabolize into uh, ketones and ketones are a much cleaner energy source than glucose. It takes a little longer to burn, but the burn, but the energy derived from ketones is a higher amount of energy. So let's say the same amount of ketones compared to the same amount, the same amount of glucose, you get higher amounts of cleaner energy from the ketone. Even though it takes longer to get, you get more energy from it, from the same amount. Glucose is basically higher burning. Think of it as like higher octane. It's fast, it's quick, but it has some other reactions that are highly toxic and can damage some things uh, along that process. Organs like the heart and the liver and the primarily the brain prefer fat metabolism, ketone metabolism over glucose. They can do both but they prefer fat metabolism. And that's why when it comes to a daily caloric intake or your daily BMR, your heart rate and your organ function is primarily burning fat where energy needed and uh, burned in the gym is primarily glucose. It's quick energy compared to long-term energy. There's through ketone production and ketone burning, there's less oxygen species, less oxidative stress, and a key to something to remember is ketone metabolism or ketone absorption into the mitochondria is transported by L-carnitine, another amino acid, synergistic with protein. However, carbohydrates need insulin. We'll get into that. So we just remember that ketones need L-carnitine to get into the mitochondria. Carbohydrates need insulin. 
the brain is made of 60% cholesterol upwards. It could be even more. That's what they theorize is the brain is about 60% saturated fat. So it is essential for brain function, neuron performance, neurotransmitter performance, and overall neuron production that we eat saturated fat for overall brain performance. Something else to, to note that we'll talk about again, FDA took saturated fat or cholesterol off the nutrient of concern list in 2014. Did you hear that? I didn't. Something nobody really reported, but how many times have you talked about a keto diet or Atkins and then saying, you'll die of a heart attack. You can't eat fats like that. Well, in 2014, the FDA recognized that and took that off of the nutrient of concern list. So there's no correlation or causation from eating edible fat to getting a heart attack. Bad fats. These are hydrogenated oils, industrial seed oils, vegetable oils, corn oil, canola oil, or any definitely any trans fats. Trans fats were made illegal to sell in the U.S., but the FDA does allow small amounts in highly processed packaged foods like cakes and pies, popcorn, frozen pizza, cookies, margarine. All of those are super toxic. Any super processed, ultra-refined oils or hydrogenated products of that are super toxic to your mitochondria and overall health, and that's what you're trying to do in this diet is fix and repair mitochondria, not hurt them. So eating these highly processed foods is the route to get metabolic disease. So anything in a package, box or a bag, don't eat because you're going to find hydrogenated oils in those uh, nutrients, in the ingredient list. Carbohydrates, sugar, non-essential for energy. Carbohydrates is a term that basically encompasses all things sugar. Glucose, sucrose, fructose, maltose, cellulose, lactose, starch, it's all the same. However, fiber or green coniferous vegetables are not broken down in the same way. The cellulose sugar molecule goes in our system and amylase or lipase enzyme can't break it apart. So we have an energy outlay to break it up. We get no energy back from it. So it is a deficit. So that does help. So you can think of carbohydrates as a way of increasing your metabolism and expending energy and getting nothing back. We get vitamins and minerals and that's about it. The body can create sugar on demand from multiple stored mechanisms like glycogen in the liver and the muscle. Uh, we can create sugar from gluconeogenesis, which is metabolizing other nutrients and soft tissues like fat and muscle. Protein is also converted from uh, nitrogen to glucose by gluconeogenesis. The majority of sugar is obviously from our diet, but we can create it on demand, so we don't need it. Glucose at high levels in the bloodstream obviously can give, lead to diabetic shock and can kill you. Glucose at high levels in the bloodstream is toxic, highly toxic. BMR is basal metabolic rate, or the rate at which your body needs and demands energy throughout the day when you're just laying in bed doing nothing. This is sustaining life and is for non-voluntary or involuntary organ function, blinking, thinking, heartbeat, your respiratory rate, your breathing, liver function, kidney function, digestion, all of these things are an energy demand and burning energy for life-sustaining organ function. This is the daily amount of energy we need to survive. And as you can see with this graph at the very top, that is EAT, exercise active activity thermogenesis. And that's the amount of energy we are needing to exercise. It's only about 4%. So this shows you that whether you work out or not is really not the secret in burning fat off the body. Does it have, it have a place? Does it affect? Sure, it has an effect on the body, but it's not the end-all, be-all way to lose weight. Far from it, because it only influences your BMR about 4%. You can calculate your BMR, and I've calculated mine by multiple different formulas to be in the mid to upper 3,000 range. And this, in reality, is about five to 700 calories less 
than what I actually consume, which goes to my thought and my understanding of it depends on what you eat. Yes, if I ate five to 700 extra calories of carbohydrates and sugar, I'd be getting fat, no doubt. But I don't. I eat five to 700 calories extra of fats and proteins, and my body uses it or excretes it. BMR can be heavily influenced by things like just things just simple as sun exposure, sleep duration, stress or cortisol amounts, metabolic health. If you're metabolically unhealthy, you're going to be in storage mode. You're going to store more energy than you are burning. But if you're metabolically healthy, as I've said before, if you're in great shape and you're in great metabolic health, you have a lot more flexibility in your diet because your body knows what to do with the nutrients. It's called nutrient partitioning. Your body can understand a carbohydrate. Oh, we're going to burn this for quick energy. Fats and proteins, we're going to rebuild this structure over here. We're going to rebuild this cell over here. It knows what to do. When you're metabolically broken or if you have metabolic disease, your body is in complete storage mode. That's all it's going to do. Any excess, any excess energy or calorie that you consume, it's going to be stored as fat. And that is the vicious cycle that we're trying to break. So that's BMR, basal metabolic rate, the rate at which you burn calories on a daily basis without moving just to sustain life. Like, subscribe, share, please. My name is Todd Derry. This is TD's Fat to Fit. I'll talk to you soon. Look, they can never keep me down. I'm going. And if I ever fail, just know I'll go.